with y'all keep uh, we got a lot of families out today sick I was just talking to Matt and Mia and he's uh, got bronchitis uh, and a few others have it Steve Amy just said Steve was sick and uh, so we got a couple of the the Bowmans are out uh, so it's that thing going around so y'all pray for them uh, that they get over that thing well I think I, I told the Lord when I, I was just telling my brother Barry this when uh, we started the church, I was getting sick all the time. I told the Lord, I said, I can't do this and get sick, and I haven't been sick for 17 years. <laughs> and I'm afraid, I'm afraid not to show up on Sunday morning because I'll probably get pneumo- double pneumonia and everything else and COVID and all the different variants and everything else all at one time. Take your Bible and go to Genesis 27. I, I, I tell you what, I got, I've got all the notes here for Genesis 27. I just don't know if I can get through it. I'm trying to. But there's just so much stuff. When you look at our lives and the lives of the world and the church, the way church is going, uh, and then you wonder why uh, God has done what he's done. It's an amazing, amazing thing. No, no matter where you look in your Bible, the story's the same. Uh, it, it's it's uh, man uh, against nature, man and, man and humanity uh, trying to live. And no matter whether it was Adam and Eve or, or uh, Noah or uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob or Moses or David or Daniel, it doesn't matter who it is or you get to the apostles or you get down through history to where uh, the 14th, 15th century, whatever, and even up to today, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Uh, you're struggling against your flesh. You're struggling against this world and the things that are in it. And that's where we're at. And so is everybody else. Everybody out down through time, it's the exact same thing. And uh, I got a little couple of notes here, but you don't ever have to worry about the Lord. The Lord is always in control. He's always got a plan. And no matter, believe me, no matter what you and I do or anybody else does, it's not going to change his plan one bit. Uh, sometimes we think that, oh, if, if I, my life goes array and awry and everything falls apart, then, then it's not going to, it's going to somehow stop God from doing, or the Lord from doing what he wants. Believe me, you, you and I are insignificant in this thing unless, unless you do what he says do. Amen. If we will listen to what he says and get in the will of God to do what he says do, there's another thing. It's, it's the will of God. Everybody, the will of God is not one thing. The will of God is your life almost on a daily pace. Sometimes you're, the will of God is, is for you to do this. The will of God is you to do that. The will of God is you to do this. Uh, and, and it's all little pieces of the will of God. Uh, it, it may be the will of God for you to go on the mission field. It may be. It may be, be for you the will of God to marry somebody or not to marry somebody. Uh, it may be the will of God for your life uh, to go to work at a certain company and not work at a certain company, or do this or not this. Uh, the will of God is, is kind of fluid in your life all the way through, and that's where a good prayer life comes in handy. Uh, you start getting a good prayer life, and you start finding God in your life, and, and, and let him guide and direct your life like he says he wants to, and then what he'll do is he'll move you in and out of his life or his plan, and you get to be part of his plan. So many times what we want to do, and we're going to see some of that right now in a second, we're going to see that we want to do what we really want to do. And that right there is where the rubber meets the road and the rub comes in. Uh, no matter what you do, I mean, I, I tell everybody, do whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you want to do what God wants, <laughs> it may not be what you want to do. Genesis 27. We got the story here of Isaac and Rebekah, Esau and Jacob. Uh, I've already been down through most of it. We're down to verse 27. That's where I stopped last week. Uh, verse 27, and, it, and, and he came near. So Jacob, Jacob, Esau told, or Isaac told Rebekah, or he actually told Esau, go out and, and shoot me a deer. Uh, man, deer's a trade. This, it's a terrible thing to go deer hunting. Uh, we got, we got somebody in here who's going to go deer hunting. I know they are, but it, it, it does, I was thinking about it. They said, uh, last year, 120 people were killed by deers in this country. So I guess they have like little heads of people up on the wall. <laughs> I have no idea. I appreciate that. But no, they said most of it was uh, car accidents. Uh, people get gored. There was a guy down in Florida who actually, uh, he, was, he went out and shot him a buck, had him in his trunk, uh, got home. The buck wasn't dead. The buck got out of the, the uh, trunk and gored him to death. And the, the buck went back out in the field. Uh, I'm telling you, man, you deer, I mean, some of these animals are terrible. They said uh, uh, people, there's a lot of people who die by dogs. They have dogs in their head. Animals are something else, but uh, I like hunting. <clears throat> I just never really went. I, my wife and me, we sit out in our backyard and look out in the backyard, and we see deer all the time. Uh, I don't really have to go hunting. I've got all the guns at the house. I can shoot that deer in the backyard. Uh, she, there was four of them in our backyard yesterday. Uh, I've got a camera now that I can zoom in on, a digital camera, so we can take some pictures and bring them in and make everybody feel really bad because they have to go out and hunt them. 
But, but Esau here was told by his dad, Isaac, said, go out and get me some venison. I want to I wanna bless you. I want to do this, but I want you to first do something for me first. And uh, so it, and he did that, and, and Jacob's mom heard that, Rebecca, Esau's mother, and Jacob's mother heard that and said, hey, let's do this first. Uh, let, let him go do that. He said, Jacob, we're going we're gonna to thwart. We're going to thwart God's perfect will here. That's what we're going to do. And that is one of the biggest dangers that you'll find. Uh, ladies, you, and men too, if it doesn't match the word of God, you better watch that thing. Uh, just because you feel that you should, Esau, uh, Cain and Abel. Cain was upset because God told him exactly what to do, and he didn't want to do what God told him to do. There's, I mean, brethren, don't you see the problem here? It's the same everywhere. Uh, Esau already has rejected his birthright. He's already put the things of God on the back burner. Uh, I don't really care about that birthright. But, boy, he's getting ready to get a hold of something here that this one really matters. This is where the money is. That blessing that comes from God is, is something that once it's passed down, Esau knew that Abraham gave it to Isaac. Isaac's going to give it to somebody else. And that blessing uh, is the hand of God on your life and the protection with the kings and all that other stuff. Uh, Esau's seen, he was 40 years old here when, when all this stuff starts happening. He's seen the kings bow down to Isaac, his father, and watch. said, look, you know, we know that the God that you have is, is a great God, and he's going to take us out. Well, now down in verse 27, uh, Esau goes out and gets his thing. Jacob's already done his thing, and, and, he, and he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, now this is Jacob he's talking to, see the smell of my son. So Jacob's already deceived his father to think that he's Isaac. Or he's Esau. I, I have a hard time understanding this sometimes, but the Lord said, if you want to be deceived, I'll deceive you. Now, the question is, is do you want to be deceived? I personally don't want to be deceived. Uh, I would rather know what I'm doing and understand that what I just did was wrong than be deceived into the fact that thinking what I did was right when it was actually wrong. I want to know what God thinks. If God thinks that what I'm doing is wrong, I want him to tell me, hey, bonehead, what you just did was wrong. And so here's Jacob. Jacob is trying to get something that he's trying to force an issue, and his mom is helping him, and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of the field which the Lord had blessed. Father, thank you for your blessings this morning. I do pray now that you'd bless this uh, Sunday school lesson, bless all the other classes of the churches around town and throughout our country, Lord, that's having morning services, Lord, that you'd bless them. Lord, I know there's a lot of sickness going through. I just pray that you'd heal people up. Keep them from getting sick, number one, but Lord, those that get it, just uh, comfort them and get them through these, uh, these times. Uh, Lord, uh, there is nothing new under the sun, and, and Lord, this is stuff that always goes through, has been down through history. Lord, we just pray, pray for your protection, your hand upon us, and bless the uh, services today. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaac, Isaac is sitting here, blind, first case of blindness in your Bible. Uh, and he starts blessing Jacob. And he goes, verse 28, he says, Therefore give, God give thee the dew of heaven and, and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Uh, be Lord over thy brethren, which puts Esau in that position. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. That is definitely Esau. Uh, cursed, be, uh, cursed be everyone that curseth thee. And blessing, uh, blessed be he that blesseth thee. Now, that's the same uh, blessing, if you go back to Genesis 12, uh, that he gave Abraham. It's the one that's I mean, that's an earthly thing. That's an earthly ground, flesh. Uh, we're talking about the fields of the earth. That's what he's talking about. And Jacob is getting it. And Esau knew that that blessing was going to come down, and that's what he wanted. Uh, verse 12, chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee and I will make. I will make. If you do these things, I will make. Abraham did those things. The Lord blessed him. He says, And I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make uh, thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse and curse uh, him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the uh, families of the earth be blessed. Now, if you all you have to do is look over uh, Israel, and you see everybody who goes against that nation usually get tore up. Uh, that's an earthly, physically ground earth thing. Uh, he's given them a blessing. Uh, salvation is through Jesus Christ. It's not through a nation, Israel, or the United States, or anybody else. It's through a man named Jesus Christ. It's through the blood that was shed at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And when he shed that blood and he opened that door for us to get to heaven, that's a totally different thing than what's going on here. 
He's talking about being blessed. If you want to end uh, the wars on this planet, what you need to do is turn all your armies over to Israel, let Israel have total control of the whole thing, and there won't be, there'll be peace on earth. But unless that nation is in charge, you're not going to have it. Now, people say, well, I don't like that. Well, I don't care. I'm telling you what the Bible says. I'm a Bible believer. Uh, I'm all for the Jew, man. I, I, was, I was in Jerusalem uh, for about seven months, eight, six, seven months. And it isn't I'm for the Jew. The Jews hate us. You do know that, right? They hate Christians. You are against everything they have. Uh, you're against, in a sense, we, they think we're against their God when we're actually for it. Because we believe Jesus Christ. They don't believe Jesus Christ is their Messiah. We believe he's the Messiah. We believe he's the Son of God. We believe he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. They don't. So since they don't believe that, they think we're at odds with them. They're at odds. You ever wonder why most Jews are Democrats? Because most Republicans can't claim to be Christian. Or the Christian base shoots to that side of the equation, so the, the Jews shoot to the other side. I never understood it. This side over here is the one that's always taken care of. I don't understand why they're... It's like the thing with uh, 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 Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth is always taking care of Shem, always taking care of him. Uh, Israel is what it is today because the United States got involved in helping them get there, but they just hate us for some reason. Uh, verse 30, and it came to pass, back to Genesis 27, uh, and it can't, everything always comes to pass. You don't have to worry about things happening. All you have to do is just sit down. The hardest thing, and I'm learning it at 65, the hardest thing is to just sit down and wait. Be still and know that. You know the will of God sometimes is just being still. Sometimes it's just waiting. Wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Saul did not wait. We are, we are some of the most hard-headed people I've ever seen. I mean, when you sit there and look, animals, animals do everything because they're animals. Uh, I had a guy, and he always says, well, you know, alpha male and, and this male. And, and, and I'm like, I'm not a dog. I'm a human. Dogs don't have... A uh, sense people say they do, but uh, dogs don't have the sense where they can make rational decisions. We can make a rational decision. Uh, I don't have to be in a crowd of people, and I don't have to be number one. I can be number ten. I can be a hundred. I can sit in the corner back there and be perfectly happy. I don't care. That's that's where life is. An, an animals they're always looking for the dominant, the dominant one. And there's a lot of people who uh, who take that attitude in life to be dominant. You don't have to be dominant. Jesus Christ is in charge. He always has been, always will be. I like that. I never have a problem with that. It's easy for me to get behind somebody to follow that is worthy to be followed. Amen. And he's worthy to be followed. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. So Jacob gets his blessing. It says, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. Now, I'm going to say this, and this is a fact, and, and you, we need to grab hold of this thing. It's, your Bible is just as precious as it could be in Genesis, as it is in Exodus, as it is in Leviticus, as Numbers, as First Chronicles, the names in First Chronicles. But the First Chronicles, I don't care where you go, Malachi, I don't care with Nahum, Habakkuk, it doesn't really matter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or Revelation, or anyone you want to go to. Any of the Gospels, Pauline epistles, it doesn't matter where you go. Once you get a handle on that thing and you look at that Bible, those stories are set there for a reason. God knows how much. Uh, I, I was listening to uh, an old preacher and he said this. He goes, the things that aren't exposed to you or shown to you is just as inspired as the things that are. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what you need to hear. He knows exactly. So he gives you a Bible with 66 books in it. Uh, if you go over to uh, 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 second or uh, Colossians, at the very end of that, it says uh, the very last couple of verses. It says, "And read this. Read the book of Colossians, the epistle to the Col Colossians to the Laodiceans, and read the epistle from the Laodiceans to uh, the Colossians." All your scholars out there, and, and Schofield, old Schofield has a note in there. I love it. I got an old Schofield reference Bible here. He's got about eight or nine mistakes in it. Do you throw his Bible out? No. You correct the eight or nine mistakes. He, he wrote in, in there that uh, in, in some better translations, uh, the, 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 the Ephesians, or it says the epistle to the, the Ephesians, to the Ephesians is not there. So he's saying that the epistle of the Ephesians is really the epistle that the Laodicean, it's kind of a generic, that's not true. That's, the oldest manuscripts have that in it. It doesn't really matter. 
if God wanted you to see the, La- the book to the Laodiceans, you would have it. It isn't that big a deal. You know what he says? You've got enough problem with what you're reading here. Nothing is ever accidental to the Lord. For some reason, we think we have to help the Lord accomplish everything he wants to accomplish. Have you ever thought that if you just stopped and let him accomplish whatever he wanted, that he could show you the direction that you're supposed to? I'll tell you what, my favorite book outside of the Bible is Pilgrim's Progress. It is, it's just like, it's phenomenal. People look at me and say, well, yeah, there's problems in it. Of course there's problems in it. I don't look at all the problems. I look at life. I see a man start lost, walking down a path, and I, I tell you, I get epiphanies reading that. He's sitting there with a Bible in his hand, and Beelzebub comes up to him and says, what made you change like that? And he goes, this book. He goes, I should have known. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me one day, that's the key. Here is all through this book of Pilgrim's Progress, this guy is lost. He gets saved. He becomes a Christian. He starts walking. He's walking toward the celestial city. He's headed there. That's, that's his purpose in life. He has no other purpose. Uh, I think raising a family is great. I got one. I think having a job is great. I used to have one. I still have one here. This is a job. This is, it's more an adventure and a job at the same time. But uh, when you sit there and look at all this stuff, my goal is eternity, is heaven. It isn't anything down here. In the process of, of getting there, there's all kinds of things I get to do along the way. And I'm okay with it. And the Lord will reveal them. I've come to the conclusion that if you don't wait on him and let him reveal, you're going to miss some of those things. And some of those things are just as precious as they could be. It is no accident that Rebecca and Jacob deceived Isaac. That did not sneak up on the Lord at all. Uh, As a matter of fact, it did not change his plan one bit. His plan is to, out of the book of Revelation chapter 20, is to throw hell and and everybody that's going to go there in there and get rid of it. That's what his plan is. He's going to get rid of sin. He's going to get rid of Satan. And he's going to get rid of the sinner. That's what he's going to do. No matter how this thing looks like it's going to play out, it's going to play out. I got, a, I got a quote in my morning sermon. It's a little poem. Life is a book of three volumes, the past, the present, and the yet to be. The first is written and laid away. The second we are writing day by day. The next and the last of volume three is locked from sight. God holds the key. You have no idea what God's going to do. You have no idea. So to make any plans or try to, try to think of what God's going to do, you're probably going to make a mistake. What you need to do is wait till he shows you exactly what to do. And when you know he's exactly what to do, then you do it. I've watched him do some of the craziest things, man. I'm learning that, boy, you get this gut feeling like, don't do that. It's like, okay, don't do that. Well, maybe if I just... just Go to the edge just a little bit. Don't do it. Then back away. Every time I don't listen to that, it always costs me. It usually costs me money, like a speeding ticket or something like that. I mean, it's, and, and he knows right where to get me is the money thing, man. I hate that. It's no accident that Rebecca and Jacob deceived Isaac. It's no accident that Jacob lied unto Isaac, his father. It's no Isaac. It's no, no, no accident there. It was no accident. These, these guys did that on purpose. It was no accident that Isaac was deceived. There is just something weird about that, uh, how Isaac could be deceived. He heard his son walk in. He heard his voice. He knew that was not uh, Esau. He knew that was Jacob. But other facts got, or other things got in the way, like the hairy hands. And his mom put hairy things. I mean, I can't even imagine somebody going to that degree to deceive somebody. Uh, but boy, they did it, and they got away with it. Uh, the Lord did not have to shuffle. This is, I guess my own little notes here. He did not have to shuffle all of his plans to come up with a new set due to the inability of all the players to do right. He did not. He already knew what he was going to do. Before the foundations of the world, if God is who he says he is, which I believe he is. I said, I was talking to uh, Brother Miller the other day. We were sitting here talking, but I tell you about this. I, a long, long time ago, man, I came up with this decision. It's either evolution or God. And when I threw evolution out the window, there is nothing left but God, and it's him. And he's always going, I'm going to default back to him 100% of the time. And if I don't have to understand something or I don't understand it, I'm going to go back to him and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I don't, I don't understand really what's going on right now. Uh, but the best thing to do sometimes is absolutely nothing. And wait till you know exactly what to do. Anytime you jump because you feel like you got to jump, you talk to older people and they'll tell you it's probably going to not be the good thing. Unless you see a really, 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 really good deal, and the Holy Spirit's all over it saying, this is what you want to do, and this is what you want to do. That house back here, I think, was that. 
We picked that house up, and, and I was not, I didn't have a real gut feeling about putting a building back there yet uh, because that house was sitting there and issues with the, that thing sitting on the line and everything else. And I had people say, well, when we got this money in the bank, and what are we going to do with this money in the bank? And blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, man, I said, I just don't feel, I don't feel right. And then all of a sudden, I get a call, and there it is. And it's like the Holy Spirit saying, get it. I went to Bible college. I'm sitting in Rota, Spain. I'm on a phone with a guy that should have never even, the call should have never went through, but it did. Uh, I know that was the Lord who did all that stuff. And the guy offers me a set of orders so I can stay in the Navy for the last three years I'm down in Pensacola, Florida, on the Navy base, taking care of three bases with 54 guys working for me, and I don't have to do nothing but go to school at nighttime. And, and he offers me a set of orders, and I'm getting ready to take the phone away from my hand and hang up and go pray about this thing. And this, this looks like his big foot out of heaven came and hit me in the back of the head and said, hey, you moron, what did you just ask for? You've already prayed. I said, yeah, I did. I said, I asked for a set of orders. I'll take them. I'll take them. <laughs> and I hung the phone up. I mean, he, the Lord had to, boy, don't you think, I, I don't know about you, but I am so thankful that I got a God that even when I'm confused about knowing what he just said do, that he reiterates that thing to me the second time and says, this is what I want you to do. The key isn't that he does that. He could do it a hundred times. If you're not going to do what he says do, you're going to end up like Isaac and Jacob, and you're going to end up like Esau, and you're going to end up like Rebekah. Because he's going to tell you what to do, and if you don't do what I tell you, then he's going to let that thing flow. And it's going to go over here. And, and guess what? He already knows what he's going to do out here, and he'll get that done with or without us. I'd just rather be with us. Myself, personally, I want to be with him. Uh, he didn't have to shuffle. The Lord's plans, the Lord's plan is him on the throne. This is his th In eternity, Satan, sinners, and sin gone, done away with. That's his plan. So once you get that in your head, that's Pilgrim's Progress. The end of that thing is the celestial city and God sitting on the throne, Lord sitting on the throne. I'm like, I got it, man. That's past the millennium. That's past the white throne judgment. That's out there in eternity. That's what the thing is. Well, if that's his plan, believe me, if he knew that from the foundation of the world, which if he's all-knowing, all-powerful, uh, he's everywhere at one time, then he knows exactly, he knows your frailties. He knows your but dust. What a blessing, man. I mean, take your Bibles, go over to, I, my, I tell you my favorite verse is uh, Job chapter uh, 41. I can't get over that chapter sometime. I mean, it just, it, it's things like that just keep me going. Because I know, I know when the Lord talks to me and he talks to me through this book, I know I can trust him. Job 41, he's talking about Leviathan. So many, so many of your new commentators want to try to tell you that's this or that, a crocodile or whatever, a big old hippopotamus. That's the devil, man. That's Satan incarnate. Uh, uh, verse 7, canst thou fill his skin with barbed iron? Or his head with fish. Oh, go back to verse 5. <laughs> Will thou play with him as with a bird? Now, I don't know about you. I like that. I just like that, man. I just, I like that when I read about my Lord playing with Leviathan like a bird. Uh, or will thou bind him uh, for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed iron? Or, or his head with fish spears? Lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle, do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? If you could see the devil, you'd fall over dead. He says, none is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? <laughs> I like that, man. Now, I mean, that is just as cool to me as anything. That is God saying he is absolutely nothing to me. But if you don't play this game right, he'll tear you up. Right. Well, you can go back to uh, uh, Genesis. We, the hardest thing that a Christian, and you have to learn this. It's, it's a learned thing. Uh, I said last week, the day I got saved, I did not understand all of this. There was so much stuff I didn't understand. I just knew that I was lost. I was undone, born and raised Roman Catholic, that Jesus Christ was my Savior, and I chose him. That's pretty much. When it came to changing, I didn't understand all the change that was going to have to occur over the years and all the stuff. Brother, 55, 60, I'm 65 years old. What is 65 years compared to eternity? It's nothing. So whatever the Lord could... Well, he's keeping me from doing what I want to do. Exactly what do you want to do? That is really that, that important. I mean, really, I mean, to me, what he's doing is important. What I'm doing is unimportant, not important, unimportant. 
if what I'm doing is unimportant, then maybe I should throw off what I'm doing and get into what he's doing. That's hard to do. I'm telling you, I wish I could do it. I'm telling you, I understand the concept. <laughs> I understand how to do what he's saying, do it. I just don't know how to do it yet. I'm still struggling with that thing on how to do the thing. I've been doing this thing for 43 years. I seen this, this uh, T-shirt the other day. I should get one. It says, uh, I'm tired of people telling me to grow up and act my age. I've never been this old before. As a matter of fact, I can say that again. I'm tired of people acting, telling me to act my age. I've never been this age before. I just got older. And I keep getting older. And I don't know how to act that because I'm not there yet. When I get there, if I could go back and do it all over again, maybe I could do something. But you start looking at that stuff as like, you know, you got to get to the place. And that's where faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. There's some very basic, simple things. Faith is not you doing what you want to do. It's doing what the Lord tells you to do and then doing it. It isn't just hearing what he says do. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What he'll do is he'll tell you a little bit of things. Mike joined the Navy. Well, God didn't tell you that. Well, he didn't tell you that. He, I think he told me that. And I did it. And I'm here today because of that. We was talking, Brother Spurgeon and myself was talking a few minutes ago. A lot of people never make it to 60, 65, 70 in just normal life. In Christianity, a lot of people don't make it at all. Not, that, not in any longevity. Uh, he, he said something, he goes, he said, come back when you're 65 and talk to me then. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man, that's pretty cool. I got, at least I got Social Security now. I can't believe it. I still, to this day, I don't believe it. It's, it's the strangest thing. I remember at 20, they told me, you'll never make Social Security. Social Security won't be there when you get there. If you believe everything everybody tells you, you're an you're a ignorant moose. I mean, you can't believe that. Life is meant to be lived one moment at a time. Amen. And enjoy that thing, man. Amen. But it, you, know how, you can enjoy it your way and then find out, boy, I wish I hadn't done that. You ever hear us old people say, boy, if I could do this all over again, I wouldn't do. Well, why, young people, why would you want to do what we did just so you can go down there and say that you wish you had never done that? Amen. The thing to do is figure out what to do first and then don't go do it again. For the rest of us, we're trying to still recover, man. We're recovering Christaholics is what we are. The Lord planned, uh, that's his throne. The, Lord, uh, the Lord's plan will be accomplished uh, without one change, whether we are part of it or not. I just, I just choose to be part of it. I want to be part of it. I want to be part. I'd rather be part. Jacob doesn't stick. Isn't it amazing right here? He says, and it came to pass as soon as Isaac made it into blessing Jacob. Jacob's out of there. Where's the party at, man? You know, when somebody graduates, uh, there's a big party. And there's usually, you know, a celebration they, they stick around at the front up here and shake everybody's hand. Thank God for what I just did. You know, if you can't do that, there's something wrong. Jacob is out of Dodge. Why? Because he knows Esau is going to come in and Esau ain't going to be happy. Why? You just stole his blessing. And Esau is going to have... Esau appears thinking he can still do whatever he wants to do. Now, here's a good lesson for us. Esau appears thinking he can still do whatever he wants to do without a cost associated with it. He, back in, I uh, actually go back to uh, 2026. 20, yeah, 25, 25. Verse 31. And Jacob said, sell me this day, talking to Esau, thy birthright. Well, the birthright of a kid, and Esau does it. The birthright is the father's blessing, the first blessing to the eldest son, whether whoever, it doesn't matter. I mean, the Lord's really serious about that thing. He, he talks in the Bible and other places in the law. He says, if, if a man marries a woman, I never still don't understand how they can get away when he tells Adam and Eve, a man for a woman, woman for a man, and yet they end up with two or three wives. I just never figured that thing out. Uh, I'll get to heaven one day, and he'll tell me how that all worked. I, I don't understand. It doesn't seem like it works very well in any case down through there. But uh, Isaac... Or uh, he'll say, if a man marries a woman and has a child, but he marries somebody else he loves more and has a child, the first, if she has the firstborn, that's still the firstborn. The firstborn is the first one that that man fathers. That's the firstborn. And that's a big thing to God. To the Lord Jesus Christ, to God Almighty, that's a big thing. And uh, Esau chunks that thing out the window, and then he thinks, I can just come back later on and do whatever I want to do. Brother, when we start chunking God out the window and, and we say we won't do it, he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If this world means that much to you and the things this world has, what you're, now, wait a second, I'm gonna, let me back this thing up just a hair. 
Let's just say that, that we have got to the point, or I'll, I'll use me as an example. Let's say I got to the point where the world had got me, and all of a sudden it dawned on me, ding, oh, man, I done messed up, Lord. I, I didn't really realize I was doing that. The Lord understands that. What he says do is just chunk the thing and get on the right track, and let's get moving down the road. But demons have forsaken, forsaken me, loving this present world. Demas was a Bible-believing, Paul-following, uh, I mean, he was a, a man that was out on the streets doing everything else, but he loved this present world. And when Paul got thrown into prison, I mean, brother, sometimes if you don't get the accolades, they say, uh, I've heard old preachers call it frustrated ambitions. If you don't get what you think you should get, all of a sudden you get mad. What do you think you should get? Have you ever sit down and wrote a, wrote a list to the Lord like you would to Santa Claus? Lord, I want this and this, this and 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 this to serve you. Well, I'm telling you, he may he may pacify you if you're a baby Christian, but if the older you get in life, what you start realizing, if you look at Paul, when Paul first got him, and he had all kinds of results in his ministry. By the time he got done, he's in prison in Rome, getting ready to get his head cut off, and only Luke is with him. The greatest Christian that ever walked this planet. The greatest Christian that ever walked this planet. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, started the Christian movement. Paul was the greatest Christian. You would, we would not understand our Bibles without that man. And we would not understand our Bibles if the Lord Jesus Christ didn't take him on the backside of the desert and beat him up for three years. And gave him what he needed to give us, and then Paul sit there and wrote that stuff out. Uh, when you start looking at it, you may not, Paul's a great example there's only one Paul. We don't need five or six. We needed one. In most cases in churches, you only need one pastor. You don't need 10 or 15. Uh, what will happen is a lot of people will come and say, oh, well, I need to be pastor. Well, maybe the Lord's going to move you down the road somewhere and make you do that. Maybe you'll be this one day, but right now they only need one. And if somebody else was, the Lord told me, say, hey, give this church to somebody else. And if they would let me, I would sit in a pew and shut my mouth and just sit there. And let them do and support them in whatever the Lord said do. Why? Because the church needs to go one direction. Uh, what's wrong with our churches today in, in the world is we have so many different organizations out there that just refuse to do what one person says do or get behind one thing. We could, they say America is a Christian nation. If America really truly was the Christian nation that says we were, there would be one leader, not the Pope. There would be, we don't need a Pope. What we need is, is a leader to stand up and for people to follow him. And I'm still for the autonomy of the local church. I think the local church should have total autonomy. But there should be, I was telling a young lady the other day, we were sitting here talking, and what I do in Dayton, Ohio, affects churches in other parts of this country because of what I do. So I have to watch what I do. I've had preachers uh, call me up and say, Mike, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean, what am I doing? And they tell me, I said, oh, man, I never even thought about that. And they said, yeah, other people are saying this, and then I have to answer for, I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll solve the problem. I'll correct it. You say, well, why don't you just tell them to go fly a kite? Because I care more about kids. We have a little camp, and we had almost 200 people there this year. And that thing is already in the, in the, in the makings of eventually, I would say within three or four years, of being 450, 500 kids. And some of those kids to this day have turned out to be preachers and missionaries and Bible students and and good church members at churches out there, and we have a chance to have an influence in their lives and help them. This is not our church. That's in churches all over this country. They come from all over the place to go to this little camp we started that we thought was absolutely nothing. But I knew we needed something, and it's turning out. Now we got churches on the East Coast. We got more churches on the West Coast wanting to come, and all these other churches. Uh, they're going to kill us is what they're going to do. We're gonna, God's going to have to give us a piece of ground with a camp on it so we can have our own camp so we can get all these people into that camp. Why? So I don't want to see that destroyed because, and that, I tell you what, our camp isn't just because Anchor Baptist Church is a great church. No, it's because we got a, a dealing with some other churches and, and because of some of these other reputations of some of these other men. And what we're doing, we're trying to keep abstain from all appearances of evil. You're trying to keep this thing as clean and above board as you possibly can and as cheap as you can and above the board as you can. And no, nobody can point their finger at it and say this, this, and this and, and help some young people. You say, are you all about young people? No, I'm about old people too. I'm an old people now. I like old people. 
Esau thinks I can do whatever I want and it's not going to cost me something and it's going to cost you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth. That shall he also reap. That is not just about money. If I'm going to go out and sow stuff, you remember, you put a seed. Of, I had a friend one time and uh, he, he read, he's, he was a, he's a Bible illiterate. I love him though. He's a good guy. He, he said, well, he told his mom, he said, corn. He said, corn stalks have seven ears on them. She goes, you're an idiot. They have two, maybe three sometimes, two mainly. Well, you take one seed, you throw it in the ground, and you do the right thing, and a stalk comes up, and you get two ears of corn on it. And if each ear of those corn has uh, 800,000 seeds on it, whatever, how many is on the corn? I haven't ever measured it. How many, anybody know? 800? So you got two with 800. That's 1,600 seeds now, then now you can plant 1,600 more plants somewhere else, and those 1,600 times 800, uh, it ain't going to take you a couple, two or three years to get, get millions, if not billions, of seeds. Now, you sin, and you plant that sin in the ground, that thing's going to come back up. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. for what. Now, you sow good, guess what? And it may take time to come up, but it will come in time. I've been doing this for 43 years. Uh, I tell you what, I got, I got guys going through this uh, church right now that are, are going to excel past where I'm, uh, I'll ever be. And I was telling a friend of mine that, and I'm like, I feel useless anymore. And I said, they're going, they're going, he goes, shut up, shut up. I said, but he goes, and I, I, I told him, I said, well, I don't have the degrees that all these guys are going to get. They're going to get masters and doctors. Are you going to get yours? You ought to take the books out there with you while you're up in a tree hunting, man. That'd be good for you while you're waiting on that deer to come up. But, uh, <laughs> You didn't hear about the deer stuff? The guy called that deer. Uh, was you in here? He, he was, uh, and it had nothing to do with you, but it had to do with just uh, Esau hunting. He, he shot a deer, a buck in Florida, and killed it with a bow or whatever. He thought he did, put it in the trunk. When he got it back out, it was still alive. He gored him to death. And then the deer took off in the woods. But never, never got no uh, denison out of that one. But Esau, Esau's in for a rude awakening, brother. He's in for a really, really rude awakening. It's coming up on him, and he's, he's not going to like it. Verse 31. And he also, isn't it amazing how the, you can bring a Bible up to date? You don't have to change a thing, man. All you have to do is read the stories like they are. And, live. and he also uh, made Savior meat. So me, Esau does all this stuff. He makes Savior meat, brought it unto his father, and said unto his father, Let my father arise and, and uh, eat of the son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. Now Jacob or Esau done ate. Now, I don't know about you, the Thanksgiving dinner every time I eat, I'm ready to go take a nap somewhere. Uh, to come up to me for a second meal right after the first one, I'm really not in the mood for that. I don't care how good it is. Uh, Jacob is sitting here, or Isaac is sitting here. He's done got his belly all full. He's done done everything he's supposed to do, totally deceived in the whole process. And he, but he does what he said he was going to do. God still accomplishes what he's going to accomplish. I don't know if that's the way God had that thing in his mind planned out. That's the way he knew it was going to work out. And he allowed that to happen. Uh, brother, I'm telling you what, sometimes you'll, you'll see God, God says, uh, thou shalt not uh, murder or kill. And David kills Uriah the Hittite. God says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Those are both crimes that uh, warrant death, or the, the, the price of that is death, immediate death. Take them out and stone them. Yet God forgave David on both counts. Two counts he forgave. Uh, so you can't ever really figure out exactly uh, what's going on. But J Isaac was deceived here. Esau completed the task at hand. This task he did completed exactly. Uh, he said, now therefore, I pray, take thee thy weapons. He did. Thy quiver and thy bow. He did. And go out to the field. He did. And take me some venison. He did. And make me savory meat. He did. Such as I love, he did, and bring it to me that I may eat, he did, that my soul may bless thee before I die. He didn't get there in time. Now, I think God could have easily, the Holy Spirit could have led him right to a, a deer. As a matter of fact, he'd have probably had a deer already hanging there uh, that he just got, and he, all he had to do was dress it. As a matter of fact, if the Lord was really in the thing, he may have already had the savory meat cooking the way he was because he loved his dad enough to have food there for his dad because his dad was sick and old and gray and getting ready to die, and I think I'm going to take care of him. I couldn't believe it, Esther. Is Esther in here? There she is. She says, Dad, yesterday, she goes, do you all want any pizza? I about fell out of my chair. I said, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Do I have to pay for this pizza? She goes, no, I'm going to pay for it. I'm like, no way. 
I said, I, I just couldn't believe it. I said, she's going to, I thought, she, maybe she really likes us. And, and she goes out and gets two pizzas and some breadsticks and everything else. And we eat pizza. And I, it didn't cost me. I'm like, now that's the way a daughter ought to treat her dad. <laughs> All the time. Oh, Jesse, I didn't see you sitting there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if, if God was in this thing and, I was, and Esau was right in tune with the Lord the whole time, uh, this thing could have worked out totally different. But Esau had his own plans. Esau chose what he wanted to do. It's very important to do what God says do. And, and he, but he didn't do it. He said that myself. And is expected. Now Esau completed the task, I said that, at hand to the smallest detail. And is expecting the rewards that come with it. He thinks I'm going to get that blessing. Verse 32. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who are thou? He's laid back, man, about ready to pass out. He's done got, you know, all the, the hormones and everything going crazy because he's got so much food in his stomach and he's trying to digest it all. And he doesn't even realize, first of all, you ate sheep, you didn't eat venison. I don't know how you can tell the difference, but maybe they're the same. I have no idea. But uh, I'm sitting there looking at this thing, and I'm like, you, everything that Jacob did to you was wrong. And everything Esau did was right. But in the end of that thing, Jacob got the blessing. And Isaac, said to, uh, Isaac his father, said, who art thou? Now, here comes Esau, and he's talking. I can hear his voice. Uh, if Andrew walked in the room, if Jesse walked in the room, if, if uh, Esther walked in the room, or Elizabeth, or Sarah walked in the room, I know exactly who they are. If their husbands walked in the room, or their wives walked, wife walked in the room, I know who they are. Uh, with my eyes closed. How he could not know that, I don't know. But here's, now he's about the same thing. Now here's Esau walks in, and the voice is right. You don't even have to see him. You already know the voice is right. He said, who are thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. Esau still thinks he's going to get the blessing. The hardest thing you'll ever do is to take a rebuke from God and not get mad. And Esau's getting ready to get one right here. And he's going to get all mad. And if you stop and look at it, said, what led me to this point? Isaac trembled very exceedingly. All of a sudden, it comes to Isaac what he did. He done messed up. And he let his flesh, love not the world, neither things. He let his flesh and that venison guide and direct him in what he did instead of what God said do. Uh, Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? <laughs> Who are you? Uh, where is he that had taken venison? No, he didn't. And brought it to me. That he did. And I have eaten all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. When God does something, it's done. Uh, if God gave, and, and in the New Testament, he doesn't give people the ability to do what he did in the Old Testament. But men in the Old Testament, when they were prophets or, or, or seers or men like Isaac and Jacob, or, or Abraham, patriarchs, he gave them the ability when they said something, God honored what they said. Uh, Moses, he honored what Moses said. David, he honored what David said. But you catch David all the time, he'll get down with an ephod, and he'll say, Lord, should I do this, should I not? And the Lord will tweak what David's doing. David says, should I go up and get the Philistines? He says, no, don't do that. He said, but go around this side over here on the mulberry side and, and come up that way. And he'll tweak what David is doing, but David asks and gets the answer and does what God says. Even if, if, the, if God answers him that, yes, it's, Saul was crazy. Samuel, Saul got Samuel. Uh, he went to the witch Endor. I really believe he went to the witch Endor. I really, oh, man, you got to be joking me. I'm only on 34. Man, I still got all the way up to 45. But uh, the witch of Endor, I've heard preachers say that they don't think that the witch Endor actually called Samuel up. I think he called Samuel up. And I don't think the witch Endor had anything to do with Samuel coming up. I think that was the Lord. And Saul was sitting there, and the Lord says, I'm done, Saul, and you need to understand. But the, he comes up, and, and he looks at him, and he says, and tomorrow, at this time, you and your sons are going to be with me where I'm at. And Samuel was in the heart of the earth, in Abraham's bosom, and that's where Saul and his sons. If Saul had half the brains that he should have had, uh, he should have just not gone to battle. David did that thing at Keilah. And the Lord, he said, Lord, is Saul going to come to Keilah to get me? And he goes, yes. That's the Lord talking. Yes, he's coming to Keilah. Will the men of Keilah turn me over to them? Yes, they will. And silence on the net. You know what David does? He gets up and gets out of Dodge. He says, if I'm not here, they can't get me up. So I'm just going to go away. 
If David would have stayed there, guess what? He'd have got turned over and that'd have been it. It'd have been done. Saul's the same way. Esau is sitting here and he says, who, 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 who? And he goes, yea, and he shall be blessed. When God says something, it's going to happen. There's just nothing you can do about it. Unless you change what God said, and it's hard. Isaac is now realizing something went wrong. He did. Uh, uh, he doesn't know the voice of his eldest son, and he should easily. Esau has to tell Isaac who he is and his position in the family. I'm your firstborn. Isaac already knows this, but he's in trouble. In disbelief, Isaac questions again, who? And then he goes, where is he that had taken venison? And he didn't. And brought it to me, which he did. I, uh, Jacob did all this stuff, just as deceiving as he could be. And I have eaten all uh, before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. The divine blessing is irrevocable. I've, I've got two things I want to read here, and then I'll, I'll shut it down. The divine blessing is irrevocable. Once uh, Jacob, Isaac gave that blessing to Jacob, there is no retrieving that blessing. It's, it's out. Isaac has the blessing that passed from Abraham to be a patriarch, and with uh, the Lord's blessed uh, what he says. Likewise, when, he, uh, when one trusts, that's us, when we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's done. It's irrevocable. I got saved in 1980. People say, well, you, you believe it. Once saved, always saved? Yep, I sure do. Uh, I'll always believe that. I will always believe that. I will never go back on that thing because for me to go back on that thing means that God has to go back on, the Lord Jesus Christ has to go back on what he did. Uh, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. That little D on the end of that word, that means a lot. People say, well, you can't, well, he said saved, that's past tense. That means it's already occurred, done, finished. When I believed on him, that happened, it's finished. I'm done, I'm saved, I'm secure. I don't have to worry about that thing. I know that God says it's irrevocable. You got that in Genesis. You can trust it, you can trust it, you can trust it. Uh, stopped. Any questions? Any? Father, thank you for your blessings this morning. We pray that you bless the morning services, bless the fellowship here in between. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.